Some years ago, at an orthodontic meeting, I was talking to a friend of mine, David Debias, who I consider one of the best orthodontists in the UK. And we were talking about the merits of orthotropics, because basically orthodontists really don't believe it works. And um, we agreed that we would do a comparative study. We would take patients who had particularly severe malocclusions, and we decided that a severe malocclusion was one where the overjet was over 10 millimeters, which is quite a severe measure. And only about 5% of the population indeed are that severe. Anyway, so we finished up with six cases treated by orthodontics and six cases treated by orthotropics. We took x-rays before and x-rays afterwards, and I took photographs of all the faces. And we then compared them. To be absolutely fair, I suggested that he should trace all the x-rays, so there was no suggestion that I was biased or cheating in any way. And he was actually quite amazed with the results because um, it showed essentially that when you treat with orthodontics, this happens, whereas when you treat with orthotropics, this happens. And of course, in a way, orthodontists believe it's impossible to make the lower jaw grow. But of course, orthotropists say that's part of the treatment. And the big benefit of orthotropic treatment is that it takes the face forward and forward-growing faces all look attractive. Whereas if you pull the face back, it looks unattractive. Also, if the face is pulled back, you're much more likely to have problems with your jaw joints, the TMD, um, or um, some people have sleep apnea. And if you take the jaw back, um, the tongue then is likely to rest against the back of your throat and restrict your airway, particularly while you are asleep at night. Um, this gives rise to big problems. Uh, many people, particularly long-distance lorry drivers, um, fall asleep because they don't sleep properly at night, because they're constantly snoring and blocking their throats. Anyway, that's slightly to one side of the research. But um, uh, we did publish the paper um, eventually, and uh, you can see the details there. But um, what was really interesting was um, when I compared two of the cases to actually show you what happens when you treat with either orthotropics or orthodontics. And you can see from the picture, um, which just shows the outline of the x-ray with a trace line over the top, you can see how the orthodontics takes everything back, whereas the orthotropics takes everything forward. Now, this particular case was very interesting because um, she got married about 12 years later and came to see me. And um, I said, do you mind if I take some photographs? She said, no, of course. And what is really amazing is that she had worn no retainer of any sort to hold the teeth straight in the intervening period, and yet they were just as straight as when I had finished treatment. Now, you may or may not know that orthodontic treatment tends to relapse almost immediately after treatment. And so orthodontists ask the patients to wear retainers, or they even glue bits of wire onto the teeth to hold them straight. And if they stop wearing the retainer, either because they can't afford adjustments anymore, or because they've got fed up of wearing an appliance, then their teeth will just relapse later on when they're older. But with orthotropics, the teeth tend to stay straight naturally, with no need for retention.